Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over this two-game NBA slate for this evening. Just a couple of announcements for those that tune into this every day. We're not going to be running the two DFS uh, Discord contest tonight, only because it's a two-game slate, but we are going to run it tomorrow. And for those of you that have been following this promotion along, uh, Christmas Day, we're going to be running a an NBA slate uh, contest, and that slate is always a, a, a real fun one. And we're making it more fun by adding, I think, a pretty decent amount of money to the prize pool. Now, we don't have the exact amount yet, but it'll be pretty significant. And it's uh, that piece of it is only going to be available to True DFS premium members. So if you want access to that, I encourage you to go to TrueDFS.com. Make sure you are registered as a premium member. There are certain, there are different ways you can become a premium member. I actually don't know all of them uh, off, offhand, but you go there and you can come up with. Uh, some package that works for you. So this is again, the calm before the storm. You have a two game slate tonight, followed by a huge slate tomorrow and, and the real fun Christmas slate, which everything being an Island game. But uh, I do feel as though slates like this tend to get ignored. Um, and I've had a lot of success in slates like this. What, what, one thing that I, I have noticed is that when you're dealing with these two game slates, you only need a couple of hoodoos to, to get different. You don't need to be as different as you might think in, in a two game slate. Um, so I don't think you got to treat this like some of those like NFL showdown slates where you want to automatically leave, leave money on the table, whether you want to, you know, just go completely cuckoo. I, I think that you can play good plays and just make a couple of pivots and put yourself in a good spot. Now, I mentioned that with respect to um, leaving money on the table. I feel as though the way this slate is panning out, you can leave money on the table. Um, you might actually, I don't want to say be forced to, but your natural build might actually leave money on the table. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put that to the test and, and run some saber sim builds after we go through the plays and see if I'm right. Um, because you look at it just just from a salary perspective, the top salary on the whole board is, is, is nine K. Um, and, and for Zingas, he is considered questionable, you know, so it's possible that the top overall salary might be eight, seven. So not to mention the fact that Zion Williamson being out is probably going to open up quite a bit of value um, in the lower salary players, which means that, without too many to choose from, you might end up getting the top scorers out of guys that do not fill out the 5K salary cap. But maybe I'm wrong. Um, this is just my instinct, but we can, we'll can we run some builds and see, see if I'm right about that. Okay, so the first game, uh, San Antonio against New Orleans, that's what I kind of alluded to. You have Zion being out. So with Zion being out, I mean, I'm literally getting the top seven overall point per dollar play plays all coming from New Orleans, right? and, and that's going to eventually lead us to um, the, the, the question: Is that how many New Orleans guys can you play together in a GPP lineup? So I think I'm going to use this question today as a, as kind of a uh, a prompt to talk about Sabersim a little bit. Okay, so. When you ask this question about how many New Orleans guys or how many from a particular team you could play in a lineup, what you're really asking is how much do players negatively correlate with one another? Because we know that sometimes players can correlate with one another, that somebody passes to somebody and then that person shoots, so you get credit for the assist and the and the bucket. However, if one guy is on the court at the expense of another guy, for example, if one guy subs in for another guy, then those guys are somewhat negatively correlated because every time one guy is on the court, the other guy literally cannot score fantasy points. Okay. But, but also it, 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 it applies to guys that are on the court because if you have two guys that are stone cold shooters, and that's the way they're going to get their fantasy points. One guy Whenever that one guy shoots, the other guy is not shooting. Okay, so so that is a way that two guys, even though they're on the same team, can be negatively correlated. Okay, um, 
And in a two game slate, it, listen, it's, it's, it's not as important as, as, you know, a 12 game slate um, because you don't, don't have that many options, but it is still something that you should consider in general, especially when your optimals or whatever is going to get you seven guys from the same team. So there's two ways to kind of handle this. One way is to go in and make sort of groups where well, let's say, you know, something about basketball and you think that, I don't know, Jose Alvarado is, is not going to do well when, I don't know, when CJ McCollum does well. Right? What you could do is you could go into the, into the group section and say, okay, I'm only going to play one of Alvarado or, or McCollum. But the other thing you could do is again, just be a little more you know general and say, listen, I don't want to play more than, you know, five or no more than three guys from New Orleans. You could set that rule in, in all the optimizers, honestly. But what Saberson purports to be able to do is factor all of that stuff in to its lineup construction. What they do, and we'll, we'll, we'll pull up Saberson and give you an example of this. It has an algorithm and it, its simulations automatically, not automatically, through their simulations, have correlation uh, data on which players correlate well with one another and which players negatively correlate. And, and what that'll do is factor all of that in to build up lineups for you that make sense. So the answer to the question, I mean, not to be glib, but of how many New Orleans guys should you play, uh, really, I can answer by saying, well, whatever Saber Sim says, okay, because a, an algorithm or, or a model or like that will factor in those types of questions that I kind of pontificated a little bit earlier. Um, the, the other thing is that I'm not exactly sure that Sabersim does this. I'd like to think they do is it's important to, to consider it in the context of a slate, right? Uh, you know, it's, if, if you have six new Orleans guys that all look good, you would think that on an enormous slate, you really wouldn't want to play six of them, but you know what? Uh, I think Sabersim does that because what it does at the end of the day is it ranks all its lineups in terms of projection points and value scores. So, so uh, excuse me, and Saber scores. So that automatically accounts for that. So uh, I guess that's the answer to that question is how many New Orleans guys is too many. I don't think there is a, a number. I think that when you're building MME lineups, basically if you have a, access to a tool like Sabersim that will make that correlation calculation for you, you know, and not make you group it yourself. I think you just kind of trust Saberson to put the right amount in for you. Now, when you're hand building, then I think that you have to, you know, have a little bit of instinct, you know, uh, on the slate uh, about who should be going with whom, how many is too many, because otherwise, you know, you're just kind of flying blind. Um, the other thing I guess I would say before we talk about this game is I think that the more guys that you play, from a particular team, the more likely or, the, well, the more weight you want to afford players on the other side of that game that maybe otherwise would not have been someone you want to play. Like, for example, and we'll get into it, but but let's just say that you like the San Antonio guy. Um, I'll just say Trey Jones for the hell of it. But you didn't like his price at 6500 It's okay to play him in the lineups with – a bunch of new Orleans, because the idea is that if a bunch of new Orleans are going to get there, then it's going to be probably because the games are game is close. And you want a guy that's going to be on the court generating as many fantasy points as possible in those types of game scripts. Um, so I guess with that said, let, let's, let's, let's deal with the new Orleans value. Um, and I guess I'm going to rank them this way. The top oh, by top overall, would be Jose Alvarado at 3,400. And my second best would be uh, CJ McCollum. Now, I got, let me look at the position eligibility here. So they're both just point guard eligible. So maybe that makes it a little harder to get them together, but not really. I mean, people are going to do this. And to answer, again, a question that's in people's heads that I just kind of brought up before is, can you play these two together? Well, I, I mean, I think you can. I think they're going to both be on the court a decent amount of time together. You're going to get one giving assists to the other. And yeah, I mean, CJ McCollum is going to garner most of the shots, but I mean, at 3,400, I don't think it matters too much. I, I think that Jose Alvarado is going to be a really, really good play. So 
I do have Alvarado's rated number one. Uh, and then the next guy I actually have rated is uh, from a point per dollar perspective would be Dyson Daniels. These guys are all pretty close. So I guess I'm just going to list them all. So, so Herb Jones at 4,200. Then you have Najee Marshall I have at 37. I'm just presuming that, that Nance is out here, but you never know. He could play. Um, we'll just see. And then I have uh, then I have uh, Valanciunas next. Uh, followed, I mentioned already, McCollum and then, and then Trey Murphy. But there are guys only have projected yet that are probably going to even play. I mean, with Zion out, I think that Hernan Gomez could be in play here. I mean, he played 10, six minutes, but he's just got to have to play more. And I've seen this over the years. I mean, Hernan Gomez can really – rack up fantasy points um if given the opportunity jackson hayes i mean he was out for several weeks and he came back and played six minutes i mean it's 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 a two-game slate i mean if he's actually active don't you think he can get in there um if in fact nance is out so again guys you play on a on a two-game slate are not exactly who you play on a, on a seven game on a ten game slate but naturally, I think all these New Orleans guys are in. I mean, with no with no Zion, it still opens up way too much. Um, the, the one that I would say I, I might fade, I wouldn't say it might fade, but it's something to note is that Valanciunas in his last game went ballistic with 73 fantasy points. And it, it's just it's difficult to ignore when you're when you're looking at this to see this in, in your game logs. And I think that people are going to go to this, not, e not even to think that he's going to score 73 again, but to, because he's been a good play, the last like four or five games just hasn't done it. Um, I think people are going to go to this game as an example of, of why he's back. They got a two game slate. I think it's probably when you're looking for any kind of leverage at all. My, my opinion is I think it's probably a good fade. Um, and you play something like, boy, oh, boy, like if you play, if Larry Nance plays, for example, I think you play him. And I think you could play Juan Hernan, uh, you know, which uh, is he Juan or Guillermo? I forget what he is, but he's the Hernan Gomez that I might play tonight. Let's put it that way. Uh, and I do think that Valanciunas is probably a decent fade, given the fact that he just put up 73 and you're looking to get difference anyway uh, on a two-game slate. So that's my initial, my initial look. On the San Antonio side, you could get a pivot right off the bat in Zach Collins. Now, listen, make no mistake, Zach Collins does not even remotely have the ceiling of um, of uh, of Valanciunas. But again, we're we're just presuming that Valanciunas busts. Right? Um, the other thing is, let's look at the. Look, you have to look at the availability of Polo as well. So, actually, yeah, Polo is probable here. So maybe that makes Collins much. It definitely makes him worse of a play. Does it make him that much worse of a play? I think that might be the case. I think that Polo would actually be the the fun pivot off of um, off of Valanciunas. I mean, you think about it. Who who in their right mind? is going to do this to play polo at 6,400 when you could play Valanciunas at 6k coming off a 73 point game. Um, now just because no one's going to play him doesn't mean he's a good play, but it, it means that no one's going to play him. <laughs> um, but it's weird. I'm, I'm still looking at ownership of 30%. I, I can't, I, I, in what world are, are people going to get to Jacopo on this slate? You know, they're going to play all the, the Valanciunas, and I guess you could play both of them, but that really wastes that utility spot in, in, in the early game. In any case, uh, I do think Podal is, is a pretty good play. And then my, my next best San Antonio play, it looks like um, it's going to be Vassal at 7,400. I mean, that, that feels really dirty. I mean, that just feels like such a – such a – awful play at that price which means that you're probably supposed to do it um th this is one of those guys that i mentioned where if you're going to play like 
five New Orleans guys, then you probably want to play the top two, you know, raw projected points guys from San Antonio, which would be Polo and, and Vassal. Um, and you can certainly afford to do it. So that, that's what I would recommend for Vassal. The price does look really, really high. Um, but it's going to, it's probably going to be a low scoring slate. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. So again, uh, on the San Antonio side, probably Vassal and um, Podal, and then as many New Orleans as you feel like. Other San Antonios, the aforementioned Trey Jones, I think is decent. I just don't think I could play Collins with, with Podal in. If he's out, then yeah, sure. And then you're getting a uh, good point per dollar play in um, in uh, Bates Diop. I think that's okay. And he's showing up at less than 20% ownership, which on a two two uh two game slate is real is pretty significant. So um yeah, that's pretty much it. I think this is where the value is on the slate. And you can play a bunch of New Orleans and then play kind of a crappy looking San Antonio team as just kind of a run back. Um okay, uh Washington, Utah. This actually could be interesting as well if Porzingis is ruled out. So he has he did not play, when was it, two days ago or something like that? Before that, he played 35 and 38 minutes. And as I mentioned, though, just, just five seconds ago, this is a raw points type slate. You know, there's not that many players that project to have that many fantasy points. So if he, in fact, plays, I mean, it's just kind of tough to ignore. I mean, when I when I rank these guys just by pure fantasy points, I have C.J. McCollum and and Porzingis is five points higher than everybody else. And even though they're, you know, point per dollar of, of Porzingis is not great. I mean, you're going to need those fantasy points. So if he plays, I mean, I would certainly consider playing him. And then you have the other guys. I mean, uh, Kuzma and Beal. Now, now if Kuzma, if, if there's no Porzingis, then what's his name? Then and Kuzma and Beal immediately become pretty playable because remember Utah plays a pretty fast pace, which we, so there's definitely upside. Um, and again, with Porzingis out, this is what you want to do. You want to play Kuzma and you want to play Beal. The other guys you, you could play if he is out is maybe, I was going to say Gafford. Um, how did he do the other day? I thought he did okay. Right. With Porzingis out. Play 30 minutes and that's going to be pretty good. But the 5K, ooh, wee, that's asking for it. Um, especially when you have, I mean, you have this poor, not poor Zingas, you have this, this Jonas, this Balanchunas play. And again, I, I kind of want to pivot. I kind of want to play somebody else there. I, this, this Hernan Gomez play is very, um, it's pretty intriguing to me, actually. Um, anyway, that's the deal with Washington. I think that if poor Zingas does play, I probably don't want to play. I really don't want to play much of anybody. Um, but if Porzingis, if Porzingis doesn't play, then then Beal and and Kuzma become priorities. Let me look again. Let me just make sure that I'm not missing something here. Nah, it looks that way. Porzingis, but only if. I mean, sorry, Beal and Kuzma, but only if Porzingis is sitting. I think. Um, okay, on the other side of the ball, the the you know the main guy uh, is 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 Laurie Markkinen, and again, I'm not too worried about points per dollar or anything like that. You just kind of need fantasy points, so 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 I kind of like him. And then there's Jordan Clarkson, 6900. That's the thing. I mean, the, the highest priced guys are very very not very pricey, and you have all this New Orleans value, so you can play whoever you want up here. Um, so I'm not too worried about the the point per dollar nature of of somebody like Larry Markinen's projection here. So I think he's very very much in play. Um, with no uh, Kelly Olynyk, I want to see how Walter Kessler did in his last outing. Um, he did play 27 minutes. Five four though is is kind of is kind of rough as a rough scene, you know. Again, likewise, I mean, you should probably go play 
play Valen Judas. Uh, yeah, even given the, I mean, he's going to be so chalky. But if you get if you get no Larry Nance, I mean, I'll tell you right now, Valen Judas is a rough. It's a rough fade. Okay. Um, not Larry Nance, sorry. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas is a rough fade if you get no Larry Nance. So that's probably why I'm going to do it. Uh, what else on Utah? Well, sorting my point per dollar here pretty quick. Conley looks like a decent play. Let's take a look at this Conley, what he did in his last game as well. I mean, just kind of busted actually as chalk. And you have Colin Sexton. He is questionable. He might be. He's moved from from out to questionable, which is probably, it's it's indicative of him more being more likely to play. So all that does is make, among other things, Clarkson a little less appealing. It makes Conley a little less appealing. It makes pretty much everybody a little less appealing. Um, but Sexton isn't much of a shooter nowadays. Um, so maybe it doesn't affect Clarkson all that much. I think it does affect Conley, though. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull up Saberson, and we're going to run some builds here. We're going to see. What we're going to do is we're going to upload my own projections. And then we're going to have Saberson make some builds here and see what we come up with. I, th I think that... Even even if you account for ownership and ownership fade, I think that I think this Valen, I think Valen Shunis, what is this? Hmm. Interesting. I think the Valen Shunis and McCollum are going to be very difficult plays to fade. But we'll see. This is Yahoo. This is DraftKings. Okay. So I'm doing it from here. You can do this to the True DFS site as well if you're a premium Saberson member. But we'll build a whole 150 lineups using their default 150 lineup sliders. This is what that looks like. And let's see. I I I, I bet you get 100% Valanciunas and McCollum. But let's see. No, you get very, you get surprisingly little Valanciunas actually, 57%. You're getting, but you are getting raw points. You're getting uh, Christoph Porzingis, but CJ McCollum, I mean, that's that's definitely the best play. And then a whole bunch of these New Orleans and, and, and Larry Markin. And so the lesson here is that you do need the salary because you do need the raw points, you know, and you'll see most of these lineups have these, you know, three kind of high scoring players, you know, in it. Um, when you look at some of the game stats and some of the ways of the construction, you'll see of the 150 lineups, you'll have five got five New Orleans guys in 25. Of them. So five, so 25 out of 150 will have five New Orleans. And then you'll have, it looks like 48, 54 of them, you'll have four. So I think the majority, so the majority of them you'll have, we will have three, four, and five. Um, uh, but you're getting a lot of New Orleans. That's, that's the way it is. You're not getting any sixes, which is nice. And you're only getting nine lineups with five, which is, which is okay. Um, so yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. We're not, again, we're not gonna we're gonna go live and talk about the slate a little bit, but don't don't sleep on a slate like this because they're still offering quite a bit for first. And if you could get lucky with one, with one or two kind of well met pivots, like I'm gonna I'm bringing up Hernan Gomez just for just for fun, that could, that could be the one, you know, because you're literally getting direct, I think, like direct leverage against Valanciunas. And this is presuming that we got to do our homework here. I want to make sure that Hernan Gomez is, does, in fact, rate to come in. I want to make sure that Nance, in fact, doesn't play. You know, if Nance is playing, I want no part of this. But if Nance is playing, I'll tell you who I want. I want Larry Nance. That's kind of what I want to do. Um, as Valanciunas, that 37 minutes is not normal. 
It just isn't. Uh, we've been watching him a long time, and that just is not a normal thing. I, I would have no complaints if he went right back to his 23, 24 minutes he's been playing. And whoever else is going to play those center minutes at lower ownership, I think makes some sense. Um, I guess that'll do it. Uh, we're going to be going live tonight, hopefully around 7, and uh, talk a little bit more about this. Good luck.